Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is an investment guide covering some of the best 4 star adventurers in Dragalia Lost as of October 2020. I'm making this video by popular demand since I've read a lot of comments clamoring for advice on which lower rarity adventurers to build up and sink resources into. If you're newer to Dragalia Lost, you may be wondering why you should build a 4 star unit in the first place. I see a lot of newer players gravitate only toward the 5 stars in their collection, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you probably have some hidden gems in your roster at the 4 star rarity you could be using. In Dragalia Lost, unlike many other gotchas, every unit is unique, so rarity is not the best indicator of usefulness or power. Many 4 stars have unique abilities and skills that differentiate them from the current slate of 5 stars, and they are often just as good, if not better, than 5 star adventurers. In addition, 4 stars are usually easier to acquire, and they're arguably cheaper to build. I say arguably here since 4 stars technically cost 25,000 Eldwater to promote, but this is more than offset by the fact that they need far fewer Champion's Testaments to fully build, especially if a Mana Spiral is involved. If you don't remember what Champion's Testaments are, they're those gold pieces of paper we never seem to have enough of. 4 star adventurers take more knights testaments to build instead, a silver piece of paper that's available in abundance by comparison. As for which 4 star units are best to build, it pretty much comes down to the same things you'd look for in an adventure of any rarity. First up is how useful that adventure is in battle, whether that's solo, auto, or co-op. In co-op, usefulness often comes down to popularity or meta, not necessarily pure DPS. And in auto, defensive and survival abilities and skills tend to rise in priority. A second reason to build a 4 star unit is that you want them as a backliner for another unit. Each adventurer has their own co-ability and chain co-ability combination in Dragalia Lost, and some of the combinations found on 4 star adventurers aren't yet available at a 5 star rarity. And finally, a third reason you might want to build a 4 star adventurer is that they have a useful shared skill. These typically take elemental tomes and at least 50 mana nodes to unlock, although story characters have their shared skills unlocked for free, and spiraled skills require even more nodes to use. And speaking of story characters, that's where we'll start for this video since they're available to all players and they're a little cheaper to build when it comes to their shared skills. After that, I'll list out my top 5 adventurers for in-battle purposes at the 4 star rarity, meaning the characters you'd actually want to take to solo, auto, or co-op content. And finally, to round things out, I will list my top 10 4 star adventurers from the perspective of backliners or for their shared skills, those being the characters you don't necessarily want to take into battle, but that you may want to build up for other reasons. So let's get started with some of the best story adventurers. The story characters are sort of graded on a curve here since they are cheaper to build, at least when it comes to shared skills, than other characters. For example, Elisan is a really strong buff bot, but not one you see too often these days in the Expert Twins Wrath or the Endgame in general. Having said that, her shared skill, if you just promote her, is very solid considering it's unlocked for free. And as for my opinion on whether to mana spiral Elisan or not, I would lean toward probably not. I don't think it's necessarily worth the resources, depending on your stage of progression in the game and what you plan to do with her. As for Ronzel, I would say he also has a great shared skill that's available for free, but primarily once you mana spiral him, which does require more investment. You'll want to do that though, since it's one of the only options available for a shared skill with Dispel. It also has a decent damage modifier and causes poison. And in fact, Ronzel is good for a lot of auto play as well, since his second skill, once he's been mana spiraled, can provide life shields, he's got a nice defensive co-ability, so he's probably even better than Elisan in that regard. As for Yudin, Yudin is somebody you'd want to promote to get the player EXP plus 15% ability, and eventually you might want to consider mana spiraling him if you really want to use him as a dragon-centric, ramping character that can run in co-op just fine and also do quite well in solo play. He's certainly an interesting character, one that you might want to have on your backlines in general for player EXP, and a pretty good investment in his own way. And finally, when it comes to Cleo and Luca, Cleo is a great all-purpose healer, her shared skills unlock for free, it's a decent heal, cures paralysis, she's got dispel on her four strike if you mana spiral her, and as for Luca, he has dispel on his second skill, dual resistances, which is good for Tartarus's wrath, and his shared skill is kind of unremarkable. 
Anyway, with the story characters aside, let's get into the characters that are available in the summoning pool. We're going to talk about the four stars that you actually would want to use in battle, and as it so happens, many of these four stars also just so happen to have good shared skills or be good backliners in their own right. So coming in at number one, I have to say Halloween Lowen probably the best overall 4 star to invest into. Halloween Lowen is a fantastic healer. His first skill provides a combination of a defense buff, a strength buff, and healing regeneration over time. It's excellent for keeping everybody healthy. That defensive buff is going to be able to trigger double buff abilities across your entire team. And his second skill gives your entire team a max HP boost, which caps off at plus 30% max HP. It's great for protecting people from getting one shot in co-op settings, even in solo or auto play. Halloween Lowen is a staple healer. He is really, really fantastic, and his first skill happens to be a great shared skill as well. So Halloween Lowen, probably my number one recommendation as far as which four stars to build. Coming in at number two is Templar Hope. Templar Hope, similar to Halloween Lowen, great in co-op, great in auto. Defensive utility is something that seems to be at a priority right now in the game, and uh, Templar Templar Hope kind of does it all. Even before 2.0, he was a solid unit used to auto Expert Ciela's Wrath, but after version 2.0 and the second anniversary, they added a strength buff on his first skill. So now, not only can he keep the team healthy with his combination of a first skill that buffs defense plus a third ability that has healing double buff, well, he can also buff their strength along the way and trigger any double buff abilities on your teammates, similar to Halloween Lowen. So Templar Hope is an amazing unit, he has dual resistances, to freeze and bog, which makes him the de facto go-to lead for autoing Expert Ciela, Master Ciela. And in Master Ciela, because of the amount of hitboxes that she throws out and the relative danger, he is a great addition to have on a team in co-op to help other players survive assuredly. And it just so happens his shared skill, it only costs four to share. It's a great shared skill, providing a combination of a strength buff and a defensive buff. So Templar Hope, probably my number two pick. And one great thing about both of these top two picks is they don't require a mana spiral to be good either. Now my third pick is a little bit different in that respect since it's Patia and you would want to mana spiral her to make the most out of her. But similar to Templar Hope, her first skill, once she is mana spiraled, is going to give a combination of a defense buff plus a strength buff. She also has access to bleed on her second skill, which is a decent source of damage. And besides that, she's in a different element, a survival co-ability is available to her, she has the HP co-ability, so she is a great choice for autoing in light content, whether that's High Jupiter's Trial, whether that's Kayan, she is a go-to for that. She's an excellent teammate for Grace because she's going to increase Grace's max HP thanks to her co-ability. Her defensive buffs are going to allow Grace to heal up via healing double buff, which is also nice. And having defensive buffs across your teams is going to mean you're eating into Grace's life shields at a slower rate, giving her plenty of time to cast a new one once the first one runs out. So Patia similarly runs the gamut. She's used in auto clears for experts Kayan. She's used in co-op for master Kayan, where you'd want to probably equip her with Azazel if you have that available. And her shared skill, similar to Templar Hope, similar to Halloween Lowen, is an excellent shared skill with a combination of strength and defensive buff. It costs a little bit more to equip than Templar Hopes. It costs five, but nevertheless, it's definitely one that is worth it. Now in fourth place, Karina. So Karina is a fantastic adventurer. Unlike these first three adventurers, she is an offensive powerhouse in her own right. She is a unit you can funnel your buff bots into and she will be the output as far as the damage. She can carry the damage on a team, which is something I couldn't say about my three previous picks. Karina has several unique properties that make her excellent. One thing is she is a sustained tank. She has healing double buff. She has ways to buff her own defense so that uh, she can just constantly regenerate. It gets even better when you have multiple Karina, so that is a common strategy in co-op, whether that be Master Hybrid Hilda or Expert Twins Agito Battle. She's excellent in both of those situations where she can clear extremely quickly. Besides that, her first skill scales in damage based on the number of buffs she has. 
So she works really well with double buff shenanigans. That skill also causes Frostbite. It's a very solid shared skill. Gonna deal a decent amount of damage and enable Frostbite Punisher if that's something that you want to do. The only knock you have against Karina is she has Stun Res rather than Burn Res. I think that makes her a little bit less preferred in auto comps for some of the flame content because she can potentially die by getting burnt. It's not too common that uh, she would, but if you're going for like a full gold Fafnir auto, you might not clear quickly enough to where she could die. And uh, in solo, that's not an issue because you can dodge a lot of that. But in full auto, it's a little bit of an issue. But yeah, having said that, like you can use her for a ton of content in the game. Mercurial Gauntlet, any of the difficult raids, she is a great choice to invest in. And paired with the other three units we talked about, they all can synergize really well with her. So Karina is my fourth pick. Now coming in at number five, gotta go with regular Loen. Regular Loen, the only thing he lacks that Halloween Loen has is his shared skill isn't really all that. For regular Loen, both his uh, defensive buff and max HP buff are on his second skill, which is not the shared skill. So regular Loen, you're gonna wanna use him in your auto comps for Expert Ciela, Master Ciela. He's good in Master Ciela co-op. He is just a good all around healer, but you don't necessarily want to share his skill. So he's not as universally useful. You also want to mana spiral him similar to Karina and Patia, so a little bit higher level of investment. But once you do mana spiral him, he's kind of similar to Cleo. He's going to get access to a dispel. He has some nice regen action happening. All in all, regular Loen, very solid healer, good for co-op, solo, auto, but he just doesn't have that shared skill that puts him on another level like the first four adventurers I just listed. And finally, my runner-up pick as far as characters you'd actually want to bring into battle. Well, I've got to give the runner-up slot to Pipple. Pipple is one who for a long time was a dominant force in co-op. You used to see it in Hybron Hilda's trial. I think you used to see a decent amount of Pipple rooms in the Twins, Wrath, Agito battle. But I just feel like Pipple isn't as prevalent as he used to be. His shared skill is more niche than any of the other characters we talked about. Uh, so far with the exception of regular Loen. When it comes to Pipple, his shared skill also has that defensive buff, which is nice, but the flame resistance on it will be hit or miss depending on the actual content you're facing. As a backliner, Pipple has uh, Dragon Haste as well as Skill Damage, which is kind of a good combination, but it's outclassed by Urius as a backliner. He gives more Dragon Haste technically and the same amount of Skill Damage. So Pipple's kind of in a spot where if there are strategies around him to exploit him, he can be good. For solo content in combination with Karina, he can do some pretty nice things or with other defensive buffers. And you can kind of throw him in there, go into co-op with him, and you'll probably do fine, probably find some other Pipple players. But I feel like just at this moment, he's not quite the be all end all that uh, he may have once been. Still a very respectable unit and he's kind of my sixth choice here as far as uh, gotch units that you'd want to build up among the four stars. All right, with those mentioned, we've kind of covered the story characters, we've covered some of the characters you'd want to build up for battle. If you want any further details on any of these characters or the ones I'm about to cover, that will be available to you via the Dragalia Lost Wiki. I'm not going to go into the technical specifics in this video, but for the rest of the video, I want to discuss who are some four stars you would build up mainly for the purpose of them being a backliner or for their shared skill, but not necessarily to actually bring into battle. And I have to start off with Dragon Yule Zanefried. So Dragon Yule Zanefried has the skill damage co-ability along with Dragon's Claws as his chain co-ability. Right now, that is the best combination we've seen with skill damage. And in the wind element, it's really the only combination with skill damage where you're getting an offensive ability in the chain co-ability. And it's one of the few ways that you can actually enjoy Dragon Ramping as a strategy in the wind element, at least off of the chain co-abilities that are available. So Dragon Yule Zanfried is just a staple. He is the best backliner for a lot of wind characters with that combination of skill damage plus the Dragon's Claws chain co-ability. Coming in at number two here, I have to mention Summer Estelle. Summer Estelle kind of in a similar position. She is a water wand, so you're getting skill damage, but her chain co-ability is buff time. And there are a decent amount of water characters who want skill damage and have some amount of buff action in their kit, such as Karina, that would want to look at a character like Summer Estelle to get that enhanced skill damage and at the same time, have their buffs last just a little bit longer. So Summer Estelle is good in that respect. 
She doesn't have a shared skill, and I should have mentioned with Dragon Yule Zanefried, he has one, but it's not anything remarkable. Now the next unit on this list breaks with that trend. So next up I want to mention Verica. Verica is probably the second best flame healer after Halloween Loen. You could make the case for Yukata Cassandra, Orion, Valentine's Hildegard, they're all good in their own ways, but I think Verica has been a staple historically throughout the game's lifespan. She's able to cleanse stun and that means her healing over time first skill, which cleanses stun, is a pretty good shared skill if you want access to that. It's something you could use, say, against flame element enemies on a water character, since flame element enemies also cause stun. But besides that, Verica is uh, a pretty good backliner as well. She has recovery potency, which is standard for staves, but in addition, she has Dragon's Claws as her chain co ability, so she can kind of fulfill a role on a backline of a dragon-centric character. She won't always fit in on that character's backline, it depends on what they want to prioritize in particular, but uh, Verica is still pretty good all around. Pretty solid healer, solid backliner, solid shared skill. That's why she's on this list. After Verica, I also want to mention Yuya. So Yuya isn't a particularly good character in combat, but he has a good shared skill and he's a good backliner. Much like Verica, Yuya as a backliner is helpful for characters who rely upon dragon transformation. He has critical rates as his co-ability, which is standard on daggers. It's an offensive co-ability, so the fact that it's combined with dragon haste is pretty nice. And that's kind of all it takes to make Yuya stand out. Now, in Flame, you also have access to Azlith, who has combo time as a backliner, so she is sort of competition for him. But if you're using a dragon ramping character like Gila Mim or Yudin, Yuya has a lot of appeal. Besides that, Yuya's shared skill is pretty interesting. Rowdy Rumpler, it's a little bit costly, but you do get a defense buff, a strength buff, and a shield, a one-use shield as well. So, so it kind of works similar to some of the shared skills I like the most, like Templar Hopes and Patsyas. After Yuya, I want to turn us to Sha Wujing. Sha Wujing is a character here basically purely for his shared skill. He's a four star you'd want to build up to use Light Tomes on so that you can get his shared skill, which is right now the only shared skill that's going to apply a defense debuff zone. Now, if you're running in co-op with other players who have access to this, just be careful. You don't want to try too many of these. I think you can stack two of them together, but not more than that. But if you are looking for a sync for some of your light tomes, Sha Wujing is one of the better light shared skills. It's certainly not a must have. You can use Patia, you can use Elisan, and probably be just fine with some of these defense plus strength buffs or pure strength buffs compared to defense down, but it is always nice and it feels very explosive when somebody brings Sha Wujing to the table. After Sha Wujing, I want to turn us to Yue and Durant. Yue and Durant are both here mainly for their shared skills as well. Both of them lower the user's defense, the difference being Durant doesn't have any healing involved, so Durant is preferred for characters who want to stay at a low HP. Yue is preferred when you actually want to be able to heal up. I've had a lot of fun and success using Yue to provide some extra self-healing to characters I take to Expert Twins Wrath when I'm not running with uh, a healer in my composition. That is usually enough healing to sustain me, so I've liked her there. Otherwise, you can use her on a couple different characters who have a high amount of critical damage and she's a pretty good shared skill. As for Durant, he tends to be preferred for characters who want to stay at that low HP like Veronica, but need some way to be able to get to low HP, so the defensive reduction is actually a key aspect aspect of him as a shared skill. And I should also say Durant is just a really high DPS adventurer, so there is some application for him outside the realm of just his shared skill. The problem is he doesn't really have dispel and he kind of needs to stay at full HP, so he isn't as desired in co-op and he's not as easy to use in auto because he will likely be taking some small amount of damage. Another unit whose shared skill I think is worth shouting out is Summer Luka. Summer Luka's shared skill gives you energy and attack rate. Attack rate is pretty hard to come by. You really only see that on Mikoto as far as shared skills go and Summer Luka. And Summer Luka is going to be more available to more players if that's something that you want to unlock. 
I don't know that I would necessarily prioritize this very highly, but it is something special enough that I felt was worth mentioning. Now besides the Merluca, Renee is another four star I think is worth your attention. In this case, mainly because of her co-ability and chain co-ability, but she also has sort of an interesting shared skill if you've already gone to the lengths of building her up as a backliner, it might be worth also grabbing her shared skill. So when it comes to Renee as a backliner, she's gonna give critical rate plus buff time. So similar to Summer Estelle that we talked about earlier, you may want access to a little bit of additional buff time while you're getting that critical rate co-ability within the water element. There are other daggers such as Dragon Yo Cleo who can give you combo time instead. So that is something that Renee would have to compete with. Some characters would rather have combo time, some would rather have buff time, but her shared skill causes bog and a defense debuff on the target. So if you don't have any other options for bog and you're already building her up as a backliner, it's not a bad thing to sink a few elemental tomes for along the way. And finally, our last backline character I want to mention is Serena. Serena is one whose shared skill isn't really remarkable, but as a backliner, she does have hits equals critical rate plus 12%, and she has Dragon Haste as her main co-ability. That hits equals critical rate is often desirable in the flame element. She's a pretty good backliner in that sense. Also very adorable, of course. So Serena is the last on this list of 10 backliner and shared skill characters. For my honorable mention this time, similar to how Pipple was my runner-up pick before, well, I'd have to give the nod to Eleonora. Eleonora has Skill Haste and Poison Edge, and there are some characters who want access to Skill Haste anyway, for whom having Poison Edge will be a pretty good option. So that pretty much covers it as far as the four stars I wanted to discuss. We started off with some of the story characters who everybody has access to for free. We then looked at some of the characters I think are best in battle. And finally, we ended things off with some characters whose main uses are more on the back line or for their shared skills, but in a few cases also are pretty decent in battle themselves. To close the video, I'll share a few final thoughts on 4 star units. First of all, you can definitely see how much defense buffs shape the current state of the game. When it comes to in-battle 4-star adventurers, all of my top units revolved around either defensive buffs or double buffs or some combination thereof. Second, not every powerful 4-star unit was shown in this video. So I want to say, don't let their absence discourage you. There are other 4-stars with some special purposes. Ryozin is one who comes to mind who is a pretty niche option, but great if you want to reliably auto standard difficulty of Tartarus's Wrath. Another adventure I didn't show off today was Clyman. Clyman has a lot of personal DPS, he's a strong shadow adventurer, good shared skill for a poison option, but I just felt like the investment on him is a little too high and his use cases are a little too narrow despite having a pretty good shared skill and pretty good overall DPS. So experiment with the four stars that are out there and see what works best for you. And finally, the last thing I want to say to close out the video is that four star adventurers can do a lot. They're worth building for many different reasons and many of them are quite powerful. I hope this video has inspired you to give them a try, build some of them up, and take them to your solo, auto, and co-op content, or at the very least, use them as a backliner. And well, that's pretty much all I have to say for today. Let me know if there are any 4-star adventurers that you want to shout out or mention in the comments below that I didn't talk about in this video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.